have to share our ex experience in handling and monitoring waste management for the past 12 years in Malaysia. Uh, the title for this forum today is, is about waste management solution post-COVID-19. I have decided to break my talk today into three segments. First will be a glance introduction of the Global Corp. Second segment will be on what we have done during the MCO. And the last segment will be focused on how we intend to manage waste to initiative and discover more opportunity on this field. Uh, for the past 23 years, Malaysia has significantly transformed solid waste management. Before 2007, Solid waste management is under the purview of local authority under the Local Government Act. A local government provides solid waste management services and contracts for collection and public testing to small contractors. In uh, 2007, Act uh, 672 Solid Waste and Public Testing Act passed by Parliament. The Act covers the whole activities of solid waste management from waste prevention, reduction, generation, separation, storage, collection, transportation, recovery, treatment, and disposal. Uh, the purpose of the Act is to standardize the service level of solid waste and public cleansing services to the cities and local government. At the same time, to create an economically and environmentally sound solid waste industry. The Act covers seven categories of solid waste, namely household, industrial, commercial, CND, institutional, solid waste from public activities and imported waste. When the public clean, whereas the public cleansing activities involve road sweeping, drains, markets, public area, toilets and grass cutting. In uh, 2011, enforcement of Act 672 has been executed in seven states until today. Three constitutional has given the responsibility for the collection and public cleansing works in the Ankora, Idaman and Asublam environment in Abrahan. Uh, okay, next, next slide. Okay. Uh, okay, next slide. Okay. Okay. Uh, this will be on the on the second segment. Okay. Okay. During the MCO. So. Um, Seven new SOP introduced. Okay, uh, on, the on the second segment, I would like to share on solid waste management during the uh, COVID-19 pandemic. The COVID-19 pandemic was also gave some impact to the waste sector when the pandemic was progressing and lockdown imposed in all the states. The Ministry of Housing and Local Government, KPKT and Nasibuko had uh, to rapidly adapt our waste management system and procedures to the situation. Uh, five new SOP were introduced during the MCO, namely uh, the first one is solid waste collection during and post pandemic, public cleansing waste during and post pandemic, collection for from the quarantine centers, public sanitation, and uh, solid waste facilities management. Next. Next slide, please. The service level of solid waste and public cleansing services. Okay, basically, the, the, all the SOPs were aimed to uh, minimize the risk of infection to the workers. Uh, and uh, collection from the quarantine centers, we also make sure that the collection of domestic waste from the beef point, not including the clinical waste from 18 quarantine centers are done and gathered under Act 342. And uh, collection waste must be disposed of without any other treatment. Next. Okay, for the public sanitation, basically the objective Okay, basically on the public sanitation, basically the objective of the public sanitation is to minimize the risk of infection to the general public. And uh, it was done in, in public areas, infection level of red and orange zone. A specific location and frequency is to be advised by the local health authority. And uh, for the waste generation during uh, COVID-19, we have done some studies on the pollution of domestic waste during uh, COVID-19. We have made a comparison on the same month, the year 2019 and year 2020. Uh, from the histogram bar graph, it shows that there is a reduction of waste collected in year 2020. 
and uh, the amount of domestic waste decreased, probably because of commercial and institutions are uh, not operate during the end of the uh, situation. Next slide. We, okay, we, we also compare collection of recyclables. From the graph, we can see and notice that the amount of recyclables show an increase during the MCO because uh, public spends more time at home and they manage to clean and sorting their waste during the MCO. Next. So the last segment. Next slide. Uh, the last segment, okay, this uh, the next uh, is a new norm and dependency on uh, foreign workers. Next slide, okay. Okay, uh, from our data, it shows that, sorry, sorry, uh, previously. No, no, previously. Previous slide. Okay, okay. From our data, okay. Okay, from our data, it shows that we have. Sorry, next, next slide, please. Okay, 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 this slide. Okay, from our data, it shows that we have uh, 25,730 numbers of workers in this field, and uh, 7,784 were foreign workers. It shows that 30% uh, from the total numbers of workers are foreigners. Uh, how did they say that uh, from May 4th? Till today, 78% of workers go to avoid infection due to the living condition. We also have the intention to reduce the numbers by replacing them with uh, parole and ex detained prisoners, uh, homeless, uh, workers retrenched from BSS during COVID-19, uh, orang asli, aborigines, and uh, ADDK uh, rehabilitation centers of funds. Next. Okay, the strengthening of workers' skill development. We believe that human assets and workers are the most valuable intangible asset for many for any uh, company or organizations. And uh, workers are essential to provide good services for the company. Uh, improving workers' efficiency, performance, and skill become our major priorities. Therefore, uh, as a group of and Department of Skill De Development (JPK) have uh, collaborate to form SWTC Solid Waste Training Center. So this um, uh, basically the accreditation to SWTC as a training center started at the first January 2019, and our objective are to provide uh, knowledge workers, key workers that is uh, the employees who possess three elements of competency, which are technical, social, and learning. From June 2019 to June 2020, we have 310 numbers of apprentices and we have produced 90 numbers of SWTC graduates. Okay, next slide. Okay. Uh, as a book of as industrial lead body LB, another new milestone and achievement of for, for as a book of is uh, we have been appointed as uh, industry lead body LB started 1st January 2020 by Ministry of Human Resource to carry out the function of uh, Department of Skill Department, uh, Skill Development. So as Blocom will represent the solid waste and public cleansing management industry in planning and driving industry growth and development. And uh, one of the functions of ILB is to ensure educate skilled workers in the industry. Uh, we also have big plans for ILB activities for the coming years. Uh, we will set and develop operational framework development Second one, creating and expand national occupational skill standard North development, set to be the reference for research and development already for solid waste industry, and execute and expand implementation of Malaysia skill centers. Okay, uh, next slide, please. If okay. you can, uh, if you can uh, wrap up, Zul. Okay. Okay, for, for the uh, new norm, basically on automation services. So basically, uh, most of the works carried out was uh, done by manually and use a lot of uh, labor intensive. We have the aims and target to replace uh, labor intensive automations. Okay, next. And uh, we have uh, on new regulation, basically, uh, JPSPN have developed and introduced two new regulations, namely ICI and CD based regulation. 
for the collection and treatment disposal under this regulation is mandatory to separate the waste according to the categories. The next slide. Uh, okay. Uh, I believe that the linear economy to sector economy, uh, uh, this is quite important. Basically, the generation of solid waste in Malaysia has increased by more than 91% over 10 years. And uh, basically, we have the intention to, to transform the current practice of linear economy to sector economy that will optimize the, the utilization of resources to the application of reducing, reuse, and recycles. And uh, circular economy will maximize the resources uh, utilization and minimize the waste generation amount. Okay, uh, so waste cannot be discarded or disposed of and should be recovered and treated as a valuable uh, resources. Um, uh, okay, next. next slide, please. Okay. And uh, GPS Band and uh, Supercop currently we have a look on the uh, applicable policy like EPR. PSU through uh, principle and tax incentive for green projects. Okay, next. And uh, the last one will be our, okay, next. Okay, the last one will be on Waste Eco Park. So basically, WP. So WP, we have, uh, we receive a waste from upstream sources and separate the commingled waste into segregated waste for downstream tenants in WP to convert into specific value and materials and products. So WP can be regarded as a private and public partnership PPP program. And basically WP will be the creation of new circular economy for our future generation towards zero landfill. Okay. Thanks. So finally, that brings us to the end of my presentation. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you, uh, Engineer uh, Zulkifli, uh, for the insights on SW Corp what it has done during the uh, MCO, as well as you know, your future plan into automation, as well as you know, uh, some of the efforts in training and so forth. So we'll probably get back to you during the q and I'd like to move on to our next speaker, which is uh, Datuk Muhammad uh, Zain Haji Hassan. He's the Chief Executive Officer of Alam Flora Syndrome Brahat. And I think all of us probably have heard of Alam Flora. It's one of the three concessioners uh, appointed by our government uh, under the full privatization of the solid waste management of Malaysia. He has uh, 20 years of uh, hands-on experience uh, serving various positions in Alam Flora. And uh, prior to that, he was also in E. Idaman, uh, another one of the three concessioners. Uh, 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 dealing with waste management. In so I think we'd like to hear more from Dato himself uh, on some of Flora's uh, initiatives, uh, his own experience during COVID, post-COVID, you know, and the way forward. Over to you, Dato. Thank you very much. Uh, Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillah. Uh, first and foremost, uh, uh, thanks for giving me time here. Let me can go straight to the slide. Okay, um, Alam Flora Sinyam Rahat, we have been in the business since uh, 1996. And uh, again, I would like to start with Alam Flora has been in waste management for quite some time. And when we talk about Alam Flora, we also would like to inform, next, next slide, that Alam Flora will be no more just a collection cleansing company. Uh, that's why you can see a lot of seg segment there where Alam Flora and our subsidiary the has basically we are into such activities which covers environmental solution from public and waste management collection up down till industrial scrap recycling and also uh, uh you call about building cleaning and whatnot next next slide please uh, this is also a, the, this is a journey waste management in malaysia is a journey i believe same with other countries as well we were before in difficult situation where waste uh, not being dealt properly. But today, with what we have, alhamdulillah, the waste management has been put into perspective. But again, as I mentioned, Alam Flora will not, do not want to be only a collection company. We would like to be a, a, a solution of uh, environment. As mentioned just now, uh, talk about uh, SDG 11 and 12. We are there to, 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 to support the government. Next slide, please. 
And this is basically part and parcel of the project that we have done. Yeah, I, I, I'll look at this uh, next on collection, waste collection. Next slide. And also city cleaning. Yeah, these are things that we are currently doing. Yeah, next. And the most important, yeah, during COVID, these are things that we have taken into consideration. Yeah, we sanitize the vehicle. We make sure the body temperature has been taken, social distancing, as well as regular hand sanitizing, because we are out there. We are essential services. We can't stop as decided by the government during MCO. So we are doing that uh, uh, properly. Next. Next slide, please. Okay. Uh, Alam Flora believes, Alam Flora really solely believes in waste recovery. Yeah, I used to tell everybody, we, we are not just 3R. We are, before 3R happens, the first R is refuse. We have to refuse. Refuse, don't buy things that you don't need. That's most important. If you need to buy, there are the three R's coming about, which is reduce, reuse, and recycle. That's why we are very serious in this. We made a lot of programs. And one of the programs is reward, SARS. Uh, this is other, one of the programs that we are doing. We work together with Petronas. We give them the uh, what they call Petronas point. That we, they eventually can can uh, uh, use it at the uh, Musra uh, stations. Yeah. Next. And and by doing that, we are not just 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 promoting just talk only. We have our own buyback centers. We get people to come. These are few buyback centers. We have twelve buyback centers in Kuala Lumpur, in Putrajaya in Pahang State. We want people to do this, bring it here, and of course, there is some uh, economic value to them as well, which is very important to promote recycle. Whatever items that we can recycle, we take. Next slide, please. And on top of that, we are not just doing recycle, we do awareness program. We use this vehicle to go to the kampung, to the villages, to, to the taman, to the towns, eh, telling people, and this vehicle, we put the big signboard and big screen where it can eventually tell people how to recycle properly. This is basically what we are doing to promote recycle, yeah, to meet the requirement as, as stated by the government. Next. Okay, another one is once we, we take the cycle FAS or separation at source, we used to have this mixed waste with e-waste. So eventually, uh, in, in, in March uh, uh, this year, we started aggressively doing e-waste neighborhood program, yeah? Because we do not want all these waste going to our material recovery facility. We want to really separate from the source itself. Yeah. Next slide. So this is our segregation waste facility recovery. As I mentioned earlier, recovery is very very important. Once we well, once we collected from house to house, from commercial, this is what we have now. We bring it to our uh, uh, recovery center. And then uh, we segregate them. And one, uh, twice a week, this company comes. We don't send it to them. They come and take it. But the concept here is from the industry goes back to industry. Uh, I love to use the, way, the word zero waste solution. But that is too ideal. But this is the way forward that we are doing now to make sure that as, uh, as uh, IR uh, Zul from SWCO mentioned just now, to increase the uh, uh, three R items, this is what we are doing, yeah? Next, uh, this is on a single stream just now. This is basically commingle waste. The first one is single stream. This is commingle, uh, commingle waste stream together with organic waste that we are doing at the landfill in Temelo, as well as in uh, Sungai Pele in, in Sepang for the KLIA, uh, the airport waste, yeah? Next. So uh, the recovery waste mass balance, uh, we are trying our best to, to follow, to, to take out it from the landfill. Of course, landfilling is, is, is the system at the moment in Malaysia. 10% recyclable material, 20% inorganic material, and organic material is about 40%. And at the moment, yeah, later on, the, the, the rest goes to the landfill. Therefore, we can save uh, out of 1,000 ton per day of MSW, Diverted to the landfill, we can save yeah from this landfill gas about four thousand odd metric cubic. Yeah? Next, so these are these are the initiatives that we are currently doing. Yeah, we we thought of upscaling this. We are looking into it, especially in our landfill in Temelo, Pahang. 
Uh, at the moment, as you can see, a product for a fuel oil diesel from waste to that. We are into that now together with one of the universities. We are looking forward for tyres as mentioned by Charles just now. Uh, moving forward, that is the way forward for Alam Flora. Again, Alam Flora is not just a waste collector. We are taking care of the environment. Next slide, please. Another one is SRF. Previously, we used to hear RDF. But this is a bit better, solid recovered fuel. This is basically, uh, uh, it will become a fuel by itself. Yeah, we are looking, we are also doing this also at the pilot scale. We, we Once everything is done, then we look at the market part of it to, to make it, to upscale the project. Yeah? This also covers uh, organic waste as well as canvas. Mentioned just now, diapers. We are also looking diapers to be part of it because it's a very good fluff. Next slide, please. The next slide. This is uh, anaerobic digester. As you can see, the first part, the top part is, this is what's happening. Food waste collected by alum flora goes to the landfill. But what we're doing now, we are doing a pilot scale now uh, with uh, uh, half a ton of waste every day. We are basically converting into anaerobic digester. Yeah, And alhamdulillah, we are successfully doing that and that can be heated for, uh, uh, for cooking. And inshallah, if we upscale that, that can become a real uh, source for electricity. Yeah? Next. And of course, uh, 11 and 12 is the utmost important. Because I used, to, uh, I used to say with the team that we have front end and uh, 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 back end. The front end is the industry. Industry basically brings either a food industry or packaging industry they always bring all the items to the public. And we as consumers are the back end uh, uh, people. So we must have responsibility, industrial responsibility, customer responsibility, and industry must eventually use good type of uh, uh, plastic, uh, sustainable products and things like that, clean products to ensure that this can be done when it goes to, to the customer. So uh, next slide. So as I, I, I mentioned earlier, Alam Flora here, not just to a prominent collection city cleaning company, we would like to increase recycling rate together with IRZOL and the government to increase the awareness, education technology, as well as yeah, to reduce source of greenhouse gas. It's mentioned just now, the 1,000 ton as per uh, cubic meter of gas. And of course, we really need to reduce the waste goes to the landfill by 70%. I believe we can achieve that together. If we have community will, industrial will, and political will, we can do that. With that, I thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Dato, uh, for keeping to the time uh, and also uh, giving us a run through on what Alam Flora has done. I think the years of Alan Flora being in the market and servicing the public, he has definitely uh, shown a lot of progress. Huh? Uh, in fact, the, almost a whole almost a whole cycle uh, that has been done. Thank you so much for that. Uh, and now uh, we'll move Thank on you. to uh, KDAB uh, waste management, and uh, we have Mr. Ramli Mohammad Sahi here, who's the managing director as well as the board member of KDAB. Uh, he's a, an interesting background. He has a master's. He's a master's of business administration. Was a corporate uh, guy uh, working in uh, banks uh, and also in uh, Australian high com. But uh, he's now dealing with uh, waste management. Uh, but I guess because of that, he has managed to also uh, create and enable KDEB waste to be the. Uh, to turn around uh, the company and make uh, a lot of revenue uh, for KDB Waste. So uh, I think it's interesting to see because KDB Waste in particular manages waste for Slango, uh, one of the most developed state in Malaysia. Uh, most developed state means more affluent society and more waste um, generally. Yeah? So uh, Mr. Ramli, if you would like to share your views, over to you. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, uh, Puan Naliza. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Well, good morning um, to the learned uh, speakers. Uh, my name is Ramli Birmatai. First of all, on behalf of the company and the state government, 
In particular, I would like to express my fair thank you for giving me the time today to join this webinar. Fantastic day today is Wednesday with all the learned panelists. Well, uh, you know, uh, I'm trying my very best to keep uh, my time 10 minutes as given by Pondo Lisa. Uh, apparently, uh, you know, if you want to talk about where it's going to be, you know, you, uh, you got to talk round and round and round, you know, because it's a very interesting thing. But, but, but then again, I'm trying to short my presentation today. If the company we are dealing with now is KDB Waste. We are 100% owned by the state government. Uh, I would just like to give some uh, insight about what we are doing in Slango. Uh, way back uh, four years ago, we've been trusted and, and, uh, and empowered by the state government uh, to deal, to take over the whole waste management uh, in, in the whole state. Doesn't matter whether it's under the, the city, the Pabanarang, or even the local council. Everything must be given to KDB Waste because um, what what state see the uh, waste uh, one of the pertinent things uh, when they run the state other than water infrastructure and whatnot, and there are some budget being uh, allocated for, for 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 waste management on a yearly basis. So what we did, um, our model is very simple because uh, the, the state decided that we are not going to subtract to X six seven two. Uh, which means that we are not uh, one of the three concessionaires, which has, uh, you know, mentioned by our result earlier and the same. So Selangor is purely uh, using our own budget, uh, our own revenue coming 100% coming from all the local council. Uh, the fact is uh, this month, I mean, I mean, by end of this month, by next month, our mission, uh, which has been tasked by the state government to take over the whole solid waste management that cover the collection of domestic waste, as well as the public cleansing will be completed by taking over completely uh, Madis Bandaran Shah Alam. That will be 12 local council that uh, we are done. Now we talk about Slango, it is very uh, interesting. Slango is the most developed state, you know, as Puan Noriza mentioned earlier. You know, we have got about 6.3 million people residing, working in Slango. You know, that doesn't count into some foreign worker, legal worker, or whatever worker that, you know, they are doing their business in Slango. And we have got almost 1.2 million taxpayers uh, in Slango. I know it is next to Putrajaya and also it's next to Kuala Lumpur. It is very congested and it is very highly, uh, you know, the, the, the social economy is very vibrant in Slango. So what happened is that we have got 12 municipal council in the whole Slango. We have two city uh, status, which is Bandaraya uh, PJ and also Bandaraya Shah Alam. And we have got uh, this Pembandaran uh, Selayang, Ampang Jaya, and we have got this Sepang and also we have got this Subang Jaya. And the rest of the four are all Madis Daera. You know, it is a big challenge uh, and, a, and a mountain to climb for all of us uh, in Slango because Slango, you know, by, the, by virtue of uh, generating kind of weight uh, per, per day basis, you know, based on the record, uh, the, the, based on the record that we received uh, from the, the landfill operator, Slango uh, apparently uh, generate close to 7,000 tons of municipal waste per day which is not something that we are proud with. But I mean, if you look into account, the domestic waste is about 7,000 ton. And we talk about maybe cleansing as well as public waste, another 3,000 ton. So it's almost 10,000 ton of waste that we have to deal with. And we, our model is purely, as I mentioned in, uh, earlier, the budget that we receive from the whole 12 local council is meant to deal with all this waste collection and also public cleansing. And if you want to take uh, this into account as comparing to the national numbers of waste, I mean, I mean, based on record, I see some numbers. We are talking about thirty-six thousand uh, ton per uh, per day of uh, waste uh, that generated in the whole country. So we are probably one of the largest contributor of waste, which is not something that we are proud with. But uh, but then again, as I mentioned to you, when we were entrusted to uh, to take over the whole twelve local council for the past four years, we have got this new model. Our model is just to ensure that we can keep Slango clean at a very minimal budget, which means that we are trying our best to compete whatever KPI which has been done by other under X672 or which is being set by the whole local council. We talk about frequency of collection of waste. We talk about frequency of grass cutting, uh, drain cleaning. We talk about bulky waste, whatever it is. We, we have come up with this model whereby the company is going to do the same thing in the whole 12, uh, 12 local council. We are not going to leave behind any local council which is not being uh, very uh, strong in their financial uh, ability. That means that the state role is very important to ensure that the state through KDB Waste can give the fair and best treatment to all the whole 6.3 million people who live in Slango, 
and 1.2 million taxpayer without taking into account whether they are coming from Majlis Daerah, whether they are staying in Majlis Pemandaran or even they are staying in Majlis Pandaraya. So what happens is that KDB is being used as the special purpose vehicle to do a big investment. For the past four years, we have invested quite heavily. Now at the moment, probably uh, we, are, uh, we are probably the largest uh, company in the whole uh, country that holds you know, 600 roll-on, roll-off lorry. We have got almost 510 compactors under our list that given services to the whole Selangor. As far as as far as towards Sabak Bernam, Kuala Selangor, Hulu Selangor, Kuala Langat, you know, Sepang, Kajang, in the heart of the city of Bandaraya, Shah Alam, PJ and whatnot, we can see our mm. fantastic uh, blue lorry running around 365 days. And as I mentioned, you know, as like Dato uh, uh, Zain mentioned earlier, there's no no to it. You know, because our KPI with the local council, we have got to do the collection 365 days a week. We have got to ensure that grass is, is being cutting as proper as schedule. We got to make sure that this drain is being cleaned as proper as schedule. We got to clean up and take up all bulky waste being generated by the whole people in Slango. This is a big task for us for the past four years. But thank God, Alhamdulillah, you know, after four years, what I can see in the whole Slango, Slango is much cleaner now after we came on board. Uh, this, uh, this can be proved with the uh, increase of waste uh, being uh, collected and dumped in the whole landfill in the whole Slango. And we have managed to reduce the complaints uh, dramatically for the past four years. But I just wanted to, sh uh, the, what do you call it, to share some of our experience uh, during the you know, six, seven weeks of uh, MCO. I noticed in Slango for the first week, there was a completely the reduce of weight, almost 7%. And then when you come to the second week of the MCO, I noticed that we look at the numbers, it was like 14% decline. And the third week of the MCO is almost 20%. But after now, after, you know, we have got this fantastic raya recently and, you know, all the shop back on business, you know, the people come to work and whatnot. Basically, what, what we have noticed, there's only like probably between 18 to 20 percent the, the waste has been reduced. And uh, this is purely because, as mentioned to you earlier, Slango, we have got so many people residing working there are so many commercial industrial factory you know people coming all around the, the, the from all around the state to come and work and live in slango and and this shows that you know we we have to do this the, the right model without hitting the state government coffer we have got to ensure that we can collect whatever waste is being collected whatever waste is being generated we have got to settle it so at our end we have to we have we have to ensure that we have been equipped with a lot of new system and new model which I wanted to share uh, with Juan Oliza and the whole of the panel uh, based on the numbers uh, when we do this uh, takeover over the last uh, four years we have uh, we have uh, what do you call that we have uh, done this model we invested in new machine we have invested in new compactor we have invested in new road we have invested also in jet vehicle we have invested in road sweeper and at the same time, we also have invested in our we call centralized command center. So what I also so what happened is for us it is very simple. Seeing is, is believing. You know we have equipped all our machine, all our lorries with vehicle monitoring system to ensure that we are not going to miss any single road, any single collection when we do our routine daily. We also at the same time we have installed a live CCTV on all our vehicles. You know, this to ensure that we can see live, we can be controlled, you know, from our head office here in Shah Alam. Uh, Noriza, you can see behind me, this is our triple C, we call it Centralized Command Center, where we are monitoring 1,100 our vehicle on a daily basis. And, uh, well, well, of course, uh, when, you, when, when you talk about uh, MCO, we have got almost 9,000 crew. Uh, they are working, uh, you know, uh, uh, on, on the 365 days. And uh, we have taken extra precautions measures. We have asked them, uh, you know, just focus on collection, just focus on the public cleansing. You know, they are required to have some temperature check. They have, you know, uh, frequent hand washing. They are usage of hand sanitizer. They got to put their face masks and also they got to wear their glove. We're really concerned of these uh, frontliners. And we know the fact is, you know, uh, even though uh, there is a risk of uh, contaminating or contacting, you know, COVID-19 disease. But uh, we believe that this is a big responsible for us. 
and but we have taken extra measures to ensure that all being taken care of all our worker and uh, you know and post uh, covid 19 you know i would just like to share uh, uh, what you call that the, the idea of this company to the public that we want to incorporate the technology when we do we deal uh, uh, our business on a daily basis we have introduced this apps we call it um, i clean whereby the public you know they just do not have to make a call download the apps from android or apple and then if you see any waste not being collected or is there is any illegal waste being dumped in any part of Slango, just snap the photo it take the gps and then send it to our command center we will pick it up if the complaint received before 12 noon every day our pledge is we will try our very best to to uh, to solve it uh, within the same day you know these apps uh, have given us extra because you don't have to go and pick up the phone you have to go and run away uh, to our office to, to talk to complain to pbt because uh, at the end of the day it is an integrated whereby we can uh, accept all call the uh, fax uh, or either called uh, uh, whatsapp and email whatever then we'll be addressing it as soon as possible and on uh this post covid we have come up with an extension of iclean where we call this uh, as iclear whereby we are trying to minimize our reporting uh, physically to the local council for example that uh, we are coming out with uh, a system whereby all the work in process on daily basis on the uh, scheduled tasks that have been given to us uh, it can be done uh, via web via phone and uh, it can be channeled through direct local council without uh, appearing uh, physical reporting uh, to uh, to their end you know uh, we can uh, talk about monitoring uh, you know with the geofencing application being installed uh, we talk about crew management we talk about the last four years we have been entrusted to do only uh, waste collection domestic waste as well as public cleansing but that does not stop us here because uh, by next month we are completely taking over the whole slango well the company uh, are trying our very best to diversify and enhance and put some values on what we are doing you know just like Dato Zain said you know we also have a big heart to do more than what we are doing we are seriously looking into improve our operational efficiency uh, other than that we are looking also on the, what you call to uh, put, uh, to uh, to to do some uh, uh, put some devices to all our machine that can detect uh, when it comes to fuel consumption, uh, we can detect. Uh, we, we are trying our best to put uh, some sensor in bins, some bins uh, collection at uh, the high rise, uh, the building, apartment, tower, and whatnot. And uh, of course, we are looking seriously also into material recovery facility or yeah. the other the disposal kind of thing, you know. Okay, Ramli, boleh wrap up lah. No, okay, fine. Uh, the, the fact is, um, Waste is something that uh, uh, we have to look seriously into it. Uh, waste is not dirty to us. Waste is money. So I, 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 uh, I seriously, uh, what do you call that, uh, suggesting and conquering whatever initiative that we made to ensure that we can reduce the waste. Uh, we can, we, we can extract some material from this waste and we can give back to society. And for this, I would love to see whether the state government and the federal, we can work together then we can keep Slango and Malaysia clean. Thank you, Puan Oliza. Thank you, Chair Ramli. Yeah, that will be SDG 17, eh, working together and collaborating. But good to know that I'm a Slangorian uh, living in PJ. Good to know that we are in good hands. Yeah. Thank so, you. So uh, we move on to our uh, last but not least, a very interesting speaker is Mr. Pang Sui Lei. Uh, Co-founder and executive director of uh, Pamarai. Eh? Pomarai actually uh, is, uh, they founded uh, a technology called Azure. And I think uh, this is a very interesting uh, uh, technology. And uh, he's an engineer by training, uh, has a lot of uh, automotive uh, airport management and transportation uh, experience. But he quit it all to talk trash. Eh? Uh, I like that, Mr. Pang. So uh, let's hear from you and share with us what Azure does. Thank you. Hi, good morning. Good morning, thank you very much. Uh, first of all, uh, thank you for having Pamarai to be part of the web seminar today, episode five. Um, first and foremost, uh, congratulations to 
um, the esteemed Madam Moderator and also my fellow uh, panelists. Uh, it has been an interesting uh, talk and presentation by all of you and I must applaud for the efforts and also the initiatives and programs that have been put in place by respective uh, organizations. Uh, next slide, please. I would like to kick off the, my presentation today with um, this statement. This is a typical statement that I use uh, whenever I present uh, overseas at the parliament, at the government, um, to corporate um, companies. Um, I just want to emphasize that the Asia, uh, the technology that we are presenting here is not about being a better um, equipment. It's not about being a better television, a better CCTV, a better compactor or a better microwave. Um, it is about being the right solution, the best solution, the definitive solution, the most realistic and the most practical solution when it comes to uh, treatment and disposal of waste. Next slide. So here I would like to share a video, a short video on uh, what the Asia potentially can do and deliver for COVID-19. Thank you, Secretariat, for the video. Um, so the next slide, uh, this is a question that I would like to throw it to the audience and also to my fellow panelists. Um, year in, year out, we have uh, plenty of seminars, programs, web seminar, uh, conferences. Uh, we talk about environmental, we talk about green, we talk about technologies, we talk about, we talk about recycling, repurposing, upscaling, um, uh, cross-function and cross uh, knowledge sharing between governments and so uh, countries. But um, at, the, at the end of the day, I think it has been more than decades that we have been doing a lot of talking, but lack of actions. So today I would like to throw this question to all of you. How sincere are we in actually wanting to do the right thing, uh, wanting to have a cultural change, uh, saving mother nature and also cleaning environment? Um, the reason that I ask this question is because um, wherever I go, uh, to the many the audience that I speak, I've spoken to, um, the, 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 the feedback has always been about um, what is the ROI, what is the profitability for us, what is the, um, um, what is the revenue gain, what is the potential downstream uh, business um, opportunities for us. So um, I hope all of us today can have an open heart and suspend our pride and ego uh, to unlearn and also uh, to relearn 
so that we can appreciate um, the balance of the presentation today. So next slide, please. Next slide. So to know, to know is to love. Um, I hope by the end of my eight minutes, I hope of you will be able to fall in love with the Azure. Next. So uh, in general, the Azure comes in three capacities, namely the two tons solar, two and a half ton electric smokeless, and four ton electro smokeless. Uh, all three units, regardless of the capacity, fits into a typical parking lot. Um, requires zero accelerants, means you do not need any fuel, gas, petrol, electricity for heat treatment process. Highly scalable, highly customizable. 80% cheaper to procure against any technology that you have out there, WTE, incinerator, biogas, biomass, anaerobic digester, uh, composting machines. And to operate, it is 90% cheaper. Next. Okay, and, and the Asia simply does this. Just this. Um, this is, it can't be any more simplified than this because it just turned your ash into uh, your trash into ash. And uh, based on our um, testing and also repetitive uh, operations, uh, we can conclude that we are able to reduce up to 96% of uh, trash volume from its original volume down to only 4% of residue in terms uh, in, in the form of ash. Next. So in doing so, um, the ash requires zero accelerance, no fuel, no petrol, no gas, no electricity. Uh, no sorting, no segregation is required. The ash uh, churn out from the ash is inert, non-toxic, and non-hazardous. Uh, it can be used as soil conditioner. When it's cooled down, it can be used as soil conditioner, and it can be used for uh, construction uh, materials. And all this is a batch processing. Um, can be, and this, pro this processing is a batch form. It takes between 45 to 60 minutes to conclude each batch. Next. So I will not bore the audience with this. I will take questions, and so you can contact me um, separately if you want to understand more on the technology. Uh, basically, what I'm going to emphasize here is we do not have, we are a totally different technology uh, from incinerator. Uh, we do not burn. There's no combustion. There's no fire. We do not use any diesel. We do not use any petrol. We do not use any gas. The heat treatment process is autonomous. It's self-generated within the system. And the, the, the layman term of the heat treatment process here, I will say uh, we are just baking and drying the waste at very high temperature uh, until it's so brittle and dry and turns into, into ash. All right? So this is patented in China, Australia. Okay? Um, the, the system is complete, completely far, complies fully to US based standards. In fact, we are 98% below the allowable limits. Uh, for example, uh, carbon monoxide discharge. Allowable limit is 50 mg per meter cube. The Asher discharges only 0 0.2 mg per meter cube. Next. So that I, I can't repeat myself uh, enough. Um, the Asher does not require external energy, no fuel, no gas, no diesel, no electricity required for its, for its process. Next. Um, the Asher ultimately is your absolute and definitive end of life for waste. Anything, any waste that you send here stops here. And the machine itself does not have a secondary discharge. There's no secondary contamination. There's no water discharge. There's no leachate water. Um, there's the, even the filtration media that we use within the system is not discarded to an external party. It can be treated using the airshot itself. So in, essentially, this is your absolute stop, the absolute full stop of waste. And finally, uh, this waste will be turned into ash that is not hazardous and it can be repurposed for for circular economy uh, for landscaping for fertilizing and also for construction next and this is um, the, the ash is or can be automated uh, plug and play quick to install um, we, we can redeploy and deploy uh, easily um, the system can be uh, tra transported to location, from location to location. And at on-site location, we just do a plug-and-play installation, and then it can commence commission operation and on-site itself. Next. It's versatile. Back, back. Back, please. Yeah, this is versatile, mobile, and redeployable. The mission can easily be, uh, can be, can be transported, redeployed. 
and also can be uh, mobilized to even challenging terrain like uh, kampung areas, mountainous area, islands, beach sites, um, and and this is can be can you can commission and decommission uh, whenever it's uh, required by by the client and users. Next, oh back, back, next. Back, back, back. Yeah. So the uh, the most one one of the one of the pain in waste management is about segregation and sorting. And and I mean I mean admittedly we are really bad at this. We we can't really sort and segregate. Um, most of the time we just lump everything. Even we, we even with the blue green yellow beans, we can't even decide where to put in the cup plus our coffee cups. Uh, so with the Azure, the beauty of the Azure is you do not do any segregation and sorting. Unlike other technology, you have to diligently sort and segregate before you feed in the waste. Uh, with the Azure, you can just load everything into the machine. It does not um, damage, it does not affect the functionality of the machine of the Azure. It can operate as, it's, as it's good as it is. Um, if you can sort, of course, it's good, but it's not necessary for the Azure for sorting process to take place. Next. Okay, I explained this. Next. Okay, this is how it looks like. This is the four ton. This is the biggest machine. Next. And perhaps I have traveled so many countries, and perhaps this is the slide where I feel most proud with whenever I'm in uh, abroad in Singapore, in 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 Korea, in Bangladesh, and China. Um, this is the one that overwhelm, overwhelms me. Um, this is not from Germany, this is not Sweden, this is not Japan, this is not Korea. This is 100% invented, innovated, and manufactured in Malaysia. Next. And over the years, we have been covered by DH. Um, I have been invited by TED um, to deliver a speech. Next. And also, we have lucky, we're privileged to be covered by uh, the mainstream news, TV3, Star, and also Astro AC. Next. And let's go to the ugly truth. Uh, let's knock some reality into our head. Next. You so, can, uh, wrap it up together, Mr. Pang. Okay. All, all right. right. So I'll just keep all this. Let's uh, go to the applications. Next. Or just next. 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 Uh, okay. So the Azure, the Azure is, is the definitive end to waste. It is practical, realistic, and truly environmental friendly. I personally, with my partner, we are not um, activists or environmentalists, um, but we are realists. We 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 seek practical solutions uh, for the world, for the for the world, for the society, for the community, for the rich, for the poor, for the developed and not developed countries. So for us, the Asia is the solution, is the answer, is the potential that can it, it has the potential to change the world. As it is. Next. Next. Okay. Okay, next. The application of the Azure is just, it, it can only be limited by your courage and your um, creativity. So um, the Azure essentially uh, advocates treatment at source. Next. And the, and it can place and to treat all these uh, large premises like airports, stadiums, halls, malls, uh, clearing up old dump sites or landfills. Plastics easily, post disaster recovery and rebuild all islands. Next. Um, highly congested area, treatment at source at markets uh, for malls, rural areas, e waste, poultry farms. Next. Medical waste, clinical waste. Um, uh, the, the top right corner is an interesting application. Uh, it's uh, for sacred text, uh, Korans, uh, because uh, one of the malls have came to us asking how we can assist. Um, by uh, dedicating um, the, the Azure purely um, in respect of the Quran text for a special treatment process. And of course, lastly, will be the food waste. Um, and then uh, from the beginning, you see the capacity is two, two and a half and four tons. People say, hey, this is very small. We are dealing with thousands and thousands and hundreds and hundreds. Well, essentially, the Azure is meant to decentralize, treat as source, not for accumulation and storing. So, but we have a concept where we call the Azure pot that are capable of treating 100 tons per day per pot. And this is highly scalable. If you have 500, we just build five pots. And the entire pot is fully solar powered. 
off grid and has an all natural uh, water wastewater treatment process, which is also part of our local invention. Next. So the schematic diagram is this: it runs on three conveyor lines um, with a capacity of 100 tons per day. Uh, can be segregated, seg can be designated for specific ways, and that it comes with a research and knowledge center, and also come with a pack um, fertilizer packaging center as well. Next, and this is a site view. So, like I said, if you want a higher capacity, we just have to multiply the number of pots to be built. Next. And last, I would like to appeal to everyone, uh, this is in line with uh, KDEB and also Alantora. They, they have a vision to uh, diverting waste, reducing waste from landfill. Uh, but as for me, uh, it, it, requires, it requires more than just Alantora and KDEB. It requires all of us to play a part. I myself no longer take out my trash. All my trash from my house, from my mother's house, um, uh, from my partner's house, we do not take it out to the to the dump, dump the dust the dustbin outside the house. We bring it to the wool factory where we treat it ourselves. So imagine if thirty three million Malaysians have that access and facility uh, nearby their community, nearby the house, where they can actually send and drop off their own waste for a definitive solutions. We no longer need uh, thousands of lorries and compactors running around consuming thousands of liters of diesels. Uh, thousands of liters of wastewater dripping around needed to be treated and thousands of acres of lands to be converted into landfill and all these uh, small small pockets and decentralized um, treatment of using the ash here it also means a wealth distribution for the community for the society it's also a empowerment to the people to actually pay a place their own part their role in in keeping the to save in saving Mother Nature and also keeping environment clean. So everyone can be a hero. Um, our tagline is uh, Landfill Division Hero, Trash to Ash. Uh, you can be part of this and all of, all of us can be part of this. Next. And that's all from me. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Pang. You might say you're not an, you might say you're a realist and not an environmentalist. But I can see so much passion there, you know, and it only means that you are very, very uh, concerned on our well-being and environment. So definitely, you're environmentalist also. <laughs> but Thank you. I, I'm very proud of uh, the product that you've developed. You know, congratulations. Thank you, ma'am. So we, we have very few minutes more, but I know uh, our our host was asking me to hurry up, but I thought... All the papers were great. Everyone had a lot to share. You know? So I didn't, I'm, I apologize for interjecting you guys at the very last minute. Uh, so I don't think we can manage a, a lot of questions. Um, I, I'm just going to see whether we have a lot uh, coming in. Uh, I, I don't think there were too much uh, on the line, right? Um, so probably a, a short chat among all because it's amazing to get the big players on screen and Charles all the way from Boston and Mr. Pang, uh, you know, with his technology. So um, moving forward, moving forward, you guys are all talking about, uh, Datuk talking about recovery, you know, uh, and then recovery and the technology that Slango has done, um, you know. So moving forward, you know, where do you see uh, Malaysia, you know, with what we are facing through now, with the pandemic, uh, but the, the numbers just now from the data from uh, Alan Flora from SW Corp shows a decline, even from KDB shows a decline. So uh, my beginning remark of a 360 degree turn doesn't seem to, uh, to be true. Uh, people are still managing their ways despite the fact that uh, we have a pandemic. So that's good, but you know, how do we how do we get it going? Uh, you know, with the technology that Mr. Pang have shared with us, uh, Charles shared uh, a, a long list just now. You know, do you think Malaysia? Uh, how can we stimulate this faster? You know, uh, not just uh, being a change agent ourselves, but how can we really, really transform faster than what we have been? And Datuk Zain have been doing it for twenty years. How can we transform even faster? So 
I'm going to leave to, it's an open <laughs> question. Please feel free to answer. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Moderator. Zain Hassan here again. Uh, okay, there are uh, uh, short cut, short term and long term, right? So um, COVID-19 teaches a lot, yeah, whereby people don't throw it because there's no shop, no bazaar Ramadan, there is no midnight shop and whatever. So what, whatever we, we, we look at things, I used to look at strategically. Number one, where we are now. Where we are now means what is the problem statement? Meaning, the problem statement now, we have too much waste. That's number one. When we have problem statement, where to go? That's the vision. The vision for me is simple, yeah? Either we want to choose just throw away, just chuck like that. Number two, just bury, which is a lot of landfilling we're having now in Malaysia. Or third, burn, like what Mr. Pang is saying, right? But the vision of the Malaysia uh, people or Malaysian government should be, we must create a sustainable society. Yeah, that is what the SDG is all about. When you talk about sustainable uh, uh, society, it has to be a resource, yeah? Whatever waste that we have now should turn to resource. Mind you, to, to produce, you use one ton of uh, paper, we have to cut down 17 trees. So these are things that we have to do. Okay, after the vision, let's say the vision goes to either the three I just mentioned or zero goal waste. That is the way forward. So I still feel to have back is a resource. We don't burn too much the resource. We don't uh, bury the resource as a landfill. It has to go back to industry. From the industry, goes back to industry. So the volume is basically at large. In Europe now, they, are, they do away with incinerators, yeah? Because, because this is something important. They don't burn resource anymore. And last but not least, the root cause. How to go there, yeah? The last question is how to go there. How to go there is again, we must understand the root cause. As, as I mentioned, the front end, the industry players, industrial responsibility, they must have four things. Number one, they must have <coughs> clean product. Number two, they must have design for sustainability product. They must also have EPR program, extended uh, producer responsibility. This is where the regulation comes in. They must have PAYT, pay as you throw. There are industry also pay throwing waste, industry in, 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 in individual. So this is something that we have to do. I believe these three questions we must to ask ourselves. Yes, I agree. Uh, we have uh, uh, Asia just now. Maybe it's a short-term solution, but in the long term, we cannot kill the resource. Resource must go back to industry or else don't talk about a sustainable society at all. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dato. 100% behind you on that one. So anyone else? Or dispose. And we should, should uh, the waste should be recovered and treated as a, a valuable resources. That, end, that ends of my statement. Thank you very much. Hi, um, I would like to chip in here. First, I... Yeah, go ahead. Yes, I would like to chip in here. Um, first, I would like to correct Dr. Zain slightly. Um, the ASHA does not burn because burning is very polluting. The ASHA does not burn. We, we, we do not uh, have any fire or combustion process in our waste treatment process. Okay, number two, um, I, I agree with uh, Ayah Zulkifli's statement that uh, we, would, we should try to recover, recycle, and then we, we repurpose the waste. But my question is, uh, what are we talking about here? We are talking about environmental protections, carbon emission, carbon footprint, correct? So um, from, a, from the point of um, a waste, a product is being produced, okay, up to the point is being put on the shelf for consumer to purchase and from the consumer, bring it to the home and consume, and then discard as a waste, and then the waste that is being collected, and then the waste is being uh, sorted, treated, cleaned, and then repurposed, reprocessed, and reproduced as a new material. So if you look at the entire spectrum here, where are the carbon emissions point? So the, 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 the point that I'm trying to state here is, in our efforts and procedures, trying to recycle, repurpose, re, uh, we salvage whatever things that we have to sell, we, we can salvage, plastic to fuel, solid to fuel, um, etc. What is the carbon emissions? 
what is the energy consumption that we are we are looking at what is the natural resources that we are using in order to put that process into place so for me waste is about a to b from from being from the point is being discarded means the point where it's being recognized as to where the point where it's being disposed in our current system for the past so many decades for those past so many decades we have not been disposing waste we have not been treating waste what have we been doing we have been relocating transferring and hiding hiding here mainly in a hole or a landfill or the dump site if we are lucky we have a landfill if we are not it's just a mere dump site that we do not know general public do not know this we do not we are not bothered by this because all we need to do from the house is pack your rubbish in the kitchen put it outside alarm for our kdeb ee daman sada waste we we'll take it away everyone is happy but for this happiness at what cost to the environment for the mother nature for the the natural resources like our land the ksu for ministry of rural development uh, once said to me they 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 have to identify uh, land areas that that is to be converted into landfills in view of the over capacity of uh, existing landfills right so so we are still um, doing not enough you see the i i i agree with dr zain uh, earlier presentation where he said the first r of the 3r which is refuse but that is almost impossible uh puan noliza uh, you mentioned you went to starbucks they no longer take your um in the, your your personal mark they have to give you their their marks so all these single use material will have to go on with with the current pandemic and the future pandemic or any other agreeing or disagreeing it's just a whole chain of managing waste producing waste you know those are the things that probably um yeah, leading to uh, our discussion here huh? um i think where datuk zain was coming from is you know you know why why talk about waste when we can actually try to eliminate waste first you know because waste after all is something that we don't use or we don't want you know and it's just a matter of eventually how we manage that and it goes into all kinds of things that we are doing now how best we are managing and you've come up with one solution uh kdb and alam flora has you know have yeah, have come up with the entire uh, circular uh, ma manner of actually managing it um i think society is definitely important you know so any other views uh, charles you want to say something chair ramli yeah i i just want to quickly stand here and just start to say i completely agree with you that Waste needs to be made and needs to be looked at as a resource. And I think that of all the panelists here, I might have a little bit of a cynical view because, again, my background, working with a lot of multinational companies, a lot of these large beverage companies that, to be frank with you, sure, they might have their marketing departments that want to have sustainable materials, as it's called. But at the end of the day, it needs to make sense from a cost perspective. So at what point, how do you make it make sense for a cost perspective for these countries? And for a lot of countries, what we've seen so far is you touched on EPR, extended producer responsibility schemes can go in there, but especially like recycled content requirements, things like that, that, you know, government led initiatives, they're going to force, you know, these industries to say, you know, these, you know, these companies to say, hey, we need to start using this recycled material, we need to start valuing it higher, you know, we have a case right now where, you know, spot cases out of the United States where recycled polyethylene terephthalate is worth more than virgin that comes straight out of the ground PET because the beverage companies need that recycled content. So when you can have initiatives like that, you just drive the industry and just drive it forward. That's when you get the investments. That's when you get the funding. That's when it gets in the news. You have the Ellen MacArthur Foundation go off. So that that I really see, you know, it's it's almost the government perspective. It's the government that needs to go in and take a leading role there. Cool. Cool. Yeah, thank you, Charles. Yeah, very, very on point too, you know. So, so uh, Engineer Zo, you want to respond on government taking that lead there? Okay, uh, okay. Uh, we see that uh, these, uh, we should enhance on these, uh, the programs to, to change the, the people mindset and attitude. And that's why we have, uh, we have come with a lot of uh, incoming new regulations like EPR, and uh, we wanted to strength, strengthen back on the, on the SARS program. And we would like to uh, see that, uh, people to see that waste can be uh, can be converted to, to, to something that, uh, uh, that uh, uh, something that we, we can recover. 
and uh, uh, we wanted to help in terms of risk can change to wealth. That is our, our aim and target in future. Thank you. Um, just very quickly, we have two questions here actually from the audience. Uh, there's a Xu Wai Yong asking about how to make separation at source as a new norm. What's the impact and effectiveness of waste separation rules, which was launched in 2019? And her second question is how ready is Malaysia's ecosystem in implementing circular economy? So probably. Um, yeah, anyone wants to pick up the question? Maybe I can answer on the on the SARS program. Uh, I admit, okay, uh, there's a still a loophole and a weakness in in the, in the SARS before this, and uh, and we see that uh, the public uh, perception is uh, they they quite uh, not satisfied with the whatever the operation or or the regulation that we have uh, uh, enforced for this. So basically, we have uh, comes with uh, um, um, we have discussed with Jabatan GPSPN and a uh, few of our colleagues from the concessionaires. We wanted to strengthen back on the SARS, and we wanted to persuade people to join together on the SARS program. So, so that uh, I believe that once uh, we strengthen and then once we we uh, 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 changing all the, the 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 procedures and the, the SOPs, I believe that. I believe that at the end of uh, at the end of the day, uh, people will participate back on this SAS program. Thank you. Chiramli, anything from Slang or side? Ah, uh, you're muted, Chiramli. Okay, uh -huh. thanks. Yeah. Okay, uh, Ponoriza, I think it's very simple. You know, a waste has been generated uh, on a daily basis by almost everybody in this state, you know, in this country, 33 million people. You just can't stop that, whether you're coming from resident, private, uh, residential, you know, industrial companies, offices, and whatever, you know. But I thought that it is very important for the public to realize and aware that they have got to change their mindset. You know, waste is not dirty, waste money. I'm proposing recycle, reduce, reuse, and whatnot. You know, this is very important because in the day, it doesn't matter whether the authority, SW Corp, Alan Tora, KDEB, KPKT, we are doing our very best to ensure that waste is being collected regularly, waste is being disposed efficiently and whatnot. But if they still keep, you know, you look at the numbers five years ago, what's the numbers like for the population of Malaysia? And what's the number of waste being generated five years ago as compared to now? It doesn't show any decline. It shows going up the, the, the stats, you know. And I thought that if you're going to live for two, this year, next year, next five years, with the same mode of mentality of the people, because as far as I'm concerned, the rule of thumb now, you can create any waste, you can generate any waste, you can dump it at anywhere as long as it's not, it, is, it is not in your backyard. This is wrong. The public has got to play a major role. The public has got to help the government, the authority, the whatever it is to ensure that we can keep the, 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 the waste low. And also, I would like to stress, I would like to pledge to the federal government. You know, we have got billions of, of, of budget every year. There must be some big budget to be allocated for any new technology other than the normal conventional landfill, which is being operated in the whole country for like, I don't know, 20, 30 years. You know, we are talking about budget allocated drastically to certain ministries, certain ministry. But I noticed there is a lack of budget being put when it comes to any new technology, which, which, which can change the whole disposal kind of thing in the whole waste industry in Malaysia. You know, or else Alan Fora and KDB will be stuck until the rest of our life to collect, to do the cleansing, and then send it to the conventional landfill. You know, we, you know, most of us have been to abroad many countries. You see all the developed countries, the European country, American, Japanese, even our neighbors, Singapore. You see how they run the disposal is fantastic. It's beyond, beyond what we are doing now. And we are living in 2020. We should ask ourselves whether priority has been given to this sector or not for the past many years. Are we still talking about collection? Then we send it to the normal landfill. That's it. We are done. No. That... That is why I thought that 2020, you must apply all this, you know, Pang has mentioned this fantastic machinery. We should look into something like this. You know, we just can't leave, you know, we just can't leave this collect and send it to the landfill. We can't. You know, this is my view, and I hope that within the public, the private, the government, we should have worked hand in hand.
to ensure that we can keep the whole nation clean because this industry is a recession proof industry. COVID-19, economy down, waste still being generated, and somebody has got to do the job. And all, only all of us here, we have to be responsible to it. Thank you very much. I add my, my views. Madam, uh, Madam uh, Moderator, last for me, if I can. Yes, sure, Dr. Okay, I think I think apart from uh, money, apart from uh, budget and incentive mentioned by uh, Ramli, and I believe that uh, the most important after all that, everybody is doing recycle. Doesn't mean that everybody is not doing it, either informal or formal. We have a lot in Kuala Lumpur and other states as well. Yeah, the only thing is to recognize these people. Yeah, we have a small people the Kaluwa Sana outside there, and then eventually do recycle. People come to please recognize them, put them into this loophole. System. Then we know. The real situation of waste has been recycled. And mm -hmm. after that, apart from that budget mentioned by Encik Ramli just now, what most important is recognize in a sense of these, these resource, this recycled resource must be made composite. Put them, big repository. It has to be at Kuala Lumpur Bursa Saham. It has to be like that. It's a composite index. Then the value will go up if it goes to Bursa. Yeah, this is very important. Take that as incentive. And you can see people do a lot of recycle. You can see zero waste will be achieved, and uh, uh, or you call this uh, sustainable society will be reached. Inshallah. Yeah, that that will be interesting to see. Yeah, how we um, make. I mean, the most dirtiest business, the most uh, lucrative business in the world. Right? I think it's already doing that. Now, Asia is already showing that itself. So that would be good to know. You want to say something, Mr. Pam? Because I'm going to wrap up in a while. Yes, I, I just want to. I just want to take a cue from what you have mentioned. Uh, all of us here is not uh, looking at the lucrative business, but all of us is looking at a uh, noble business, trying to save environment, trying to um, do do a better uh, do better for Mother Nature and for the next uh, generation. Uh, but I have, I do have one question for um, government agencies, uh, namely SW Corp. Here, um, I think um, government government need to um, put in place an initiative and program that that aligns to land fuel diversion policies and regulation that that aligns to land fuel diversion. Can you imagine if all premises, all big premises like factories? shopping malls, they must uh, exercise and they must exhibit their landfill diversion program because these are corporates and these corporates generate space. So I think corporates must show and display, exhibit and show evidence that they have a landfill diversion program on premise, be it by way of recycling, be it by way of uh, using the airship or using composting, but that they must show they have put in the initiative that they are diverting trash from going to the landfill and being sent uh, out using the trash uh, lorries. Maybe the engineer as well could answer from you. Yeah, I agree with a uh, statement from Mr. Pang. So, uh, Mr. Pang, basically we have the, the targets and aims to, to uh, divert our waste from uh, goes to the, to the landfill. We have targeted 40% of uh, diversion of waste. And uh, we are the midst of planning and uh, to, to execute on uh, whatever the programs uh, uh, or planning that we, we have uh, discussed before this with Jabatan, Kumusan Sisipa Bajal. And uh, basically on our uh, recycling rate, we have achieved this year around uh, 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 30%, 30%. And in uh, 2025, we are targeting more than that. We are targeting 40%. So mm -hmm. I agree with you, Mr. Pang, and uh, inshallah. Uh, with the, the with the uh, cooperation from from the others, our concessionaires, uh, maybe we can get some advice from Chirambi, from KDB, and from the outsiders, including you, Mr. Pang. Maybe we can achieve our targets. Thank you very much. Okay, I think yeah. Thank you so much, all of you. Uh, I hope I really hate to end this discussion. I think it has been very very interesting. I've got uh, tons of notes here taken. You know. Uh, I, for one, has always been trying to, yeah, you know, trying in all the work that I do, trying to address waste. It's not easy, you know. Um, even developers do not really want to do it, you know. But I totally agree. You need to start from yourself. You need to start from neighborhood, society. So the whole chain is important. You know? 
it's just it's not just about saving the trees and and it, it's actually just the fact that you don't produce waste is something i think very crucial and i think we need to go into that reduce waste first ourselves you know i think we've got a lot that's why we are a very wasteful society when you have less you are more careful i mean if you only have five plates in your house you'd be very careful when you don't have water you know how to share that plate you don't even wash it but because you've got so much you know and and i guess that's where we become not caring uh very wasteful and you know uh, and a little bit uh i think you know not responsible so i think this is where uh, sustainability is very crucial um i hope this agenda I hope we can have this discussion, maybe SW Corp, JPSPN could actually bring the forum to a much different level. Urbanists, we're having our Malaysia Urban Forum in September. Probably we'd like to do a subject matter on waste and, yeah. you know, and bring more uh, parties into the discussion. So yeah. thank you very much to all the panelists and I'd like to thank hand you. over to Nick Sufini back again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Madam. Well said. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Puan Riza, and all to all the panelists. I agree with her. I don't want, I hate to end this session, but I have to. Um, so once again, thank you to Puan Riza and all the esteemed uh, panelists. That was a very, very, very good discussion and presentation from all of you. And to all the participants for staying with us and for listening and for the questions as well. <clears throat> if you have any more questions, Regarding this session or Technomart or Mike, please contact us and we'll be um, most pleased to uh, have further discussions with you. Um, and when you leave this session, of course, there's going to be a short survey. Please um, spend a minute to uh, fill in the survey for us. And you can actually watch the session again on uh, our Mike Malaysia YouTube channel. And also, please follow us on Mike's um, Twitter, IG, and Facebook. And, and with that, ladies and gentlemen, uh, panelists, moderator, participants, thank you very much. And we wish you a very, very good day ahead. Assalamu alaikum. Goodbye. Wa alaikum salam. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wa alaikum salam. Thank you.
Lah takkan tak ada buang kat sini kot Tak boleh Aku cakap tak boleh tak boleh Kau buang tempat lain Lah sampah je bukannya benda lain pun Weh orang cakap kalau kedekut tanah Kubur sempit weh Belum kedekut tong sampah Apa ni main kubur-kubur Apa guys? Bang, tak ada bang. Benda kecil je bang. Bang, sekarang ni saya duduk atas ni tau. Duduk atas ni je. Sekarang ni saya nak tumpang buang sampah saya dekat tong sampah dia. Itu je bang. Takkan tu jadi isu pun. Lagi pun bang, nanti bang. Tukang ambil sampah tu, ambil sampah dia, ambil sampah saya. Saya bukannya buang mata-mata. Eh, kau jangan marah aku. Aku bukan sampah. Relax lah, benda boleh bincang. Bang, nak sampah macam mana bang? Bang, tengok dalam ni eh. Okey bang. Dalam ni ada kertas dengan botol-botol plastik je bang. Itu je pun. Sekejap. Tadi kau cakap apa? Ada botol plastik dengan kertas. Ha. Eh, kau tahu tak yang kau nak buang ni semua ni ada nilai. Semua ni boleh dikita semula. Sekarang kan dah ada alam flora. Kau dah mana? Eh, kan? Tunggas. Alam flora itu syarikat pengurusan sisa pepejal untuk menguruskan dan mengurangkan sisa sampah supaya bumi kita ini bersih. Diorang ada sediakan pusat kita semula untuk orang awam hantar barang-barang yang dah tak pakai dan mengamalkan 3R on wheels. Kau faham masa aku? Ui. Macam syok je bunyi dia. Bau tak syok. Macam ni. Yang special ni pasal 3R on wheels ni. Kau kumpul barang-barang kita semula kau ni. Lepas tu kau hantar dekat dia orang. Dan kau takkan balik dengan tangan kosong. Sebab... Sebab apa? <laughs> Sebab kita akan mendapat ganjaran wang tunai dan juga ganjaran lain. Sebagai contoh, sekarang ni dia orang ada bagi mata ganjaran kad Petronas Semestera selain daripada Tunai Kau ada tak Kat kata orang semasa Ada Cantik Maknanya Kita hantar terus Ke pusat kita semula tu je Ya betul Pandai pun Sisa sampah tu Kita boleh hantar Ke Putrajaya Presin 8 9 11 14 16 18 Jalan bonus 6 Kuala Lumpur Dan Cyberjaya Masa tu juga Terus dapat duit Ye, yeah, tunai Wow Kalau kau tak tahu kat mana nak hantar barang-barang kita semula kau ni Kau boleh ke social media Alam Flora Dekat situ kau akan tahu jadual 3R on wheels ni Nak tahu ataupun info lebih lanjut Kau boleh tengok website yang betul Haa, dekat sini macam-macam info kau boleh dapat Lepas tu aku nak beritahu kau Okey, barang seperti minyak masak terpakai Kertas botol ni semua dia ada harga ni Ha, harga pula ikut kadar semasa Okay, kalau macam tu, tunggu apa lagi? Jom kita, kita semula!
Rasa sayang, hey, rasa sayang, sayang, hey Lihat nona jauh, rasa sayang, sayang, hey Rasa sayang, hey, rasa sayang, sayang, hey Lihat nona jauh <tuk> <tuk> Lun Cik Cik buat apa ni? Buang sampah Apa lagi? Hey, kalau ada 10 orang macam Encik ni Tak lama lagi flat kita akan jadi tempat perusahaan sampah tau Inilah attitude yang kita tak boleh contohi tau Tolonglah, kita duduk kat sini berbilang kaum Kita patutnya jaga kebersihan sama-sama Ini tidak Sampah sepatutnya dekat dalam tong sampah Bukan boleh dicampak-campak macam tu je Cuba Encik bayangkan Sampah yang Encik baling tu terkena kat kepala orang Lepas tu berdarah Lepas tu menyebabkan kematian Mati? Macam mana? Huh? Cuba Encik beri dekat bawah saya baling TV ni dari atas huh? Cuba lah, cuba Encik, Encik, Encik Kenapa Encik? Encik dah attack Encik tak boleh orang tegi-tegi Oh, 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 Encik, Encik tahu tak sampai yang Encik nak baling ni beratnya akan jadi dua kali ganda dengan tinggi dengan graviti. Tahu tak? Saya tak tahu. Maaflah, saya tak tahu benda-benda macam ni. Okey, okey. Tak apa, tak apa, tak apa. Sekarang ni kita pergi ambil sampah kat bawah tu. Lepas ikut saya. Ha. Nak ikut pergi mana? Jom. Ha. Busuklah sampah ni. Hmm. Memanglah busuk. Lagi-lagi kalau Encik selalu buang sampah merata macam tadi tu. Silap hari bulan, tempat tinggal kita ni boleh jadi macam tempat sampah ni tau. Kalau busuk pasal boleh mendatangkan penyakit. Cik nak ke? <tuk> awak ni suka tegi-tegi. Tadi awak tegi, ni awak tegi lagi. Cik, 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 cik nama. Cik nama. Cik nama. Tapi saya nak tanya Cik, kenapa Cik bawa saya datang ke sini? Ha. Tong sampah ini telah disediakan oleh pihak kerajaan demi kebersihan dan kesejahteraan kita bersama. Buat apa kerajaan sediakan tong sampah besar gedabak macam ini kalau kita tak reti nak guna? Macam mana sekalipun, memang sampah perlu ada dalam tong sampah ni. Bukan buang sesuka hati. Ada sampah. Pam 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 pam. Saya janji kita akan buat lagi. Janji. Janji janji. Ah, terima kasih awak kerana nasihatkan saya satu benda penting hari ini. Stop jadi ni. Eh. Hey. Tak apa. Kali ni biar saya yang pergi. Jaga awak. Jom rawat bumi.